And we all mention Abraham. We all love Abraham. We call him the father of faith. We, we, we honor, we respect him even in his death. Amen. Even in his being gone all these years. But we forgot what he did that got him there. What did he do? Next verse. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Tell anybody, rise up early in the morning. Rise up early in the morning. Amen. 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 Rose up early in the morning. Early in the morning. Successful people, kings, are turned on by diligence. Early in the morning, he was up already. When was the last time you rose up early to do something that really mattered to God, that mattered for the house of God, that mattered for the kingdom of God? How well do you do the things which God gives to you? The technical crew, you're a chorister, you're an usher. Is there excellence in your service? Do you rise up early? Or do you always come late? Because all of this thing is the excellence. He rose up early in the morning. Not to go and do something good. The way God said, okay, so if you rise up early, you know, you're going to make a lot of money. No, God is, you know, I want you to come sacrifice your son. And the young man... Uh, um, I call him young because he was obviously very young at heart. Abraham wakes up early in the morning to go and sacrifice his son. There are some offerings, there are some sacrifices that rising up early in the morning is the only way you can really show that you're really doing it with your heart. You got to rise up early and make those offerings. I'm, and I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. Before the end of the day, before the end of the day, I see folks sometimes you give them tasks, you give them assignment, and it's been done for weeks, sometimes nice months. And I was there the other time in Chernobyl, and uh, I remember Pastor Frank making reference to something he told someone to do. He's been trying to do for over a year now. It took over a year for finally for it to be done. Technical crew. I look at him, I began to speak, and we began to speak, and he tell me, say, say, Pastor, you know, um, speaking about the sound adjustment, technical crew, you call them, you tell them, come and learn. You would adjust the sound and set it up, they should learn. They would come, they would not come, and when they finally come, they would change everything, and everything would be out of place. Get, get some professional Ukrainian, for example, to come in to help adjust and set up the things. When they come, they look at it, change everything. No excellence. I remember going to share with him. I told him, I said, we've been through all this place, all these phases. I remember the time, you know, you buy an instrument or you buy something new. You tell the folks, there's manual inside. Read the manual. They don't like manual. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to this one because it's very important and applicable. I want you to watch a pattern. An individual will not open the manual to a gadget. An individual who will not follow set principles and rules. It's already said, they tell you, put it here, tune it to this level. Person will not do. I'm speaking about a certain character that must change if we are going to really give God our best. We can't keep doing things the way we like. Hallelujah. I remember those days. I'd come and wonder, ah, what is this? I'll go sometimes, I'll go somewhere, or go to a program, or even go, go somewhere, or go to a church, we'll come, and you'll hear sound. I say, God. Our church can just sound at least a little like this. You know, we thank God we finally broke through. Amen. 
And I'll say this. Sometimes you think it's the instrument. Many times it's not the instrument. Amen. Listen to me. It's not the instrument. It is the attitude. It's not the instrument. Are you with me? It's not the instrument. There's someone who is waiting now to get a very powerful video camera right now. Or photo camera. We have them now. Where are they? Amen. I remember the days when camera was an issue. I had one then that Pastor Gibson blessed the church with one serious camera. In fact, there was a time we had laptop. Laptop was an issue. We have all of those things now. What is done with it? Tell about attitude. Determines your altitude. Amen. It's like buying a car. I'm just going to make reference. I had said, you know, I had said, but I will never make reference to that thing again. But I think I should just make, refer- make reference to it. I remember we bought our church bus. It was fine. It was working so well and so good. It was perfect. Everywhere. We would travel everywhere and anywhere with it. Across cities and different programs. Everywhere. While it was under the care of Pastor Gibson, everything was perfect with that bus. There's nothing you couldn't do with the bus. You think the problem is the car. It's not the car. You think the problem is the car. It's not the car. I'll say it again. The problem is not the car. Amen. Tap your neighbor and say, upgrade yourself. Upgrade. Uplift yourself. Upgrade. Say, change. change. Amen. The same way the problem was never the car. It's exactly the same way sometimes the problem is not the microphone. The problem is not the song they told you to sing. Amen. Amen. The problem is not with the message. How are you processing what you are, what you are getting? He rose up early in the morning. Took two of his young men with him. The rest is history. You know, God took special note of it. And at the end of the day, the Lord blessed him and perfected his words over his life. It matters what you are bringing to God. Please listen. It matters what? Amen. Amen. Tell me, I've got to be excellent. Say, I've got to be excellent. Say, I've got to be excellent. I've got to put in more. I've got to give my best. I've got to put in my best. Hallelujah. I was, I was, I was. It's in a situation where you call two people. Huh? Let's say in a concert. Technical crew did nothing. The same setup of the microphone, the same setup, everybody using the same setup of microphone. They didn't touch anything. And you give one person, and you say, sing. And everybody is clapping and happy and joyful, and everybody can hear. And you give another person. This one just finished singing. The same microphone, nothing was touched. Nothing was touched. In fact, everybody, give me camera, cut it. I give another person, you can't hear this person's voice. The same microphone. So the problem is not with what? Just saying. Amen. Just saying. Tell about giving your best. Some people can't even sing into a microphone right in front of them. You can't, but in the hostel, you're shouting, you can't sing. We're hearing your voice five floors below and five floors above. But microphone is at its best. We can't hear your voice. Can't give your best. Can't sing your best and just for just 30 minutes of worship. You can't sing. You can't sing. It's not nice. Tell anybody it's not nice. It's not nice. Hallelujah. It's not nice. Tap your neighbor and say, give God your best. Give God your best. Give God your best. 
let your it's okay for your voice to crack it's a shame that your voice has never cracked for God before let your voice crack for the first time for God amen, amen. let your ribs pain you for God huh? give him your best let your veins come out from your neck because you're giving him your best Give God something. Let's, let's look at it. Let's go. Second Samuel 24, verse 24. Second Samuel 24, verse 24. Give God something that costs you something. And the king said unto Arauna, No, I will surely buy it of you at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So this is King David, and I want you to realize I'm calling different names of different people. I want you to see how did David get to where he got to. Now, the Lord came with a prophetic word and said, go and make an offering. The, the, the prophet who brought the God never told him where to go, how to go, or, you know, like, you know, what I should be. You know, Christians will love free things. What do you mean? We love free things. We love it free. We love it cheap. We love it free. We want everything free. Amen. Tap your neighbor. Say, don't get used to free things. Don't get used to free things. Tap yourself. Say, I, I don't want to get used to free things. I want to be blessed enough to pay for anything I want. Amen. I want you to see the excellence of characters of men who stand before King. Abraham, um, when his wife died, when Abraham's wife died, he was going to bury her. The people offered to give him the land at whatever. He said, no, 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 I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. Amen. Amen. Don't be that person who has what it takes to pay for something, but you keep trying to do conniman. You want the free one. Amen. Amen. Why do you really think that you will be blessed so to say, more for or in a service where you didn't contribute anything to, this, to the service at all. You were not in technical. You did not clap even when they say clapped. When they say lift up your hands, you didn't lift up hands. All you did was show up in church. Sometimes I wonder what was going through people's mind when they are in church like that. Because no man is meant to be idle. Something was going through your mind. Try to record the things going through your head during services. Some of you, you may not like it. How do you contribute to the God whom you love every time? What are you contributing? Why do you like it free? In fact, even to come to church, somebody paid for your transport fare. Somebody brought you to church. They had to come carry you. Somebody with his car came to carry you with his taxi to church. Rich church. The least you can do is dance. You won't dance. They say dance. Everybody, let's dance to the Lord. <laughs> clap like this. You don't clap. Say to somebody, I love you. You don't say. Nothing. Don't like free things. I'm going to somebody. Contribute something. See to it that the service is moving because, oh, that's what I did. That's what I did. That's what I brought. Amen. For example, if I use an example, our welfare, every month there is, there, is, there is cake to court. Not talk of the other things they give. Let me say this. It is people who are making that happen. It doesn't just happen like that. Amen. The cakes don't make themselves. Hello? Cakes don't make themselves. The juice, they don't make themselves. And there are people who will not miss the third service of every Sunday. <laughs> they have it calculated. Somewhere in their subconscious, they like the free service date, the food se free food service date. 
And there are people now, if we have, when we have our next shot, there are some people you will see suddenly. Yeah. Tap your neighbor say, don't be cheap. Don't be cheap. And it's a shame sometimes when people even fight for things. The pursuit didn't reach me. The pursuit didn't reach me. Why didn't you give me pursuit? You didn't pay for pepper soup. You didn't pay for it. You are fighting. Now do face like that. In fact, service, you miss service for some time. You know, see what she was doing. You know. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The man of God says, I will never offer burnt offerings. Amen. What he's saying is, I'll never be in a church or in a service where I'm not contributing something tangible to it. I refuse to be in a place and just get com- comfortable and, get, and be at home and, and, be, and be relaxed and I do nothing. I got to do something. I got to do something, especially when nobody's doing anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If all you contribute is hallelujah, praise God. Amen. I receive. If that's it, you know, you're doing something. You keep the church going and encouraging the preacher. That's all I do. Amen. I'll do something. But have something you contribute. What do you do? Just come. Sit down. Look at time. Go. It says, I will not give God that which costs me nothing. It must cost me something. It must cost me something. These are some people make choices for church. They like a church close to them. A church where they don't have to spend transport fare. A church where they can walk to. Some people are so cheap. They know this church is not helping them. Nothing is working for them. But they just like it because they don't have to pay any money. You trade, you trade five grievings. You trade your destiny and your future, your life, for five grievings. I've seen people do that. Amen. Some people like it. They'll just come from upstairs. Just walk to the church. That's why some people, some people prefer to go to cell meetings than to go to church. Cell meetings in their area. Amen. So look at what David did. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Amen. Amen. To anybody, he bought it. He paid for it. It was for God and he bought it. Amen. Amen. Let it touch your heart one of these days. Hmm? You're in this church. Let it touch your heart one of these days to say, okay, oh, um, how does the water in this church get refilled? Amen. Amen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get the next one. I'm gonna fill all the containers. Let it touch your heart. Don't every time be signaling ushers water, water. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Before water came, you could sit down and have service straight. There are many churches and services where you go to. You can stay for two, three hours. No, you don't think water. You don't drink water. You don't like water. You don't. Uh, you see water. You drink four times during service. Sit now, one go water. Sweet, sweet. Because it's free. Amen. I'm not saying so. You don't drink water. <laughs> Some people won't drink water in their houses. Some of you won't buy water. I know you. You won't buy water in your houses. <laughs> you plan to come and drink it all in church. Drink for three days ahead. See the next service. <laughs> it's funny, I know what I'm saying. Huh? I'll drink in church. You eat in the house, come and drink in church. <laughs> you see people, as they are coming into church, the first place they are going to is to go and drink water. <laughs> Just come from outside, come, drink water. <laughs> drink like three, four cups. <laughs> Pass everywhere on the road where there is water to buy. It didn't buy. In the house it didn't buy. Drink. As service finished, you see, first drink again. Drink and go home. You wonder what happened? Is it the word? You are drinking water to digest the word or what? 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> Don't like it free. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink what I enjoy again after today. Okay? <laughs> if I will force some of you to drink. Amen. 25. What I'm saying is find something to contribute. He says, I wouldn't give God that which costs me what? Nothing. Find something to contribute. Your time, your energies, your voice. You, you, you find something to contribute. Your expertise. You know how to make posters. You, in fact, we see you, you can make your own posters now. But all we know is every time a poster comes, you're complaining about the poster. You complain about how the poster could be nicer, but you never, ever by yourself has made one or contributed one. Ah, this, this is off. This is that. This is that, you know. Amen. <laughs> one day. What are you contributing to the house of God? What are you contributing to the kingdom? What are you doing to better things? What are you bringing to the table? And he offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. The Lord was pleased. Hallelujah. The Lord was pleased. The Lord is pleased every time we give him our best. Hallelujah. The Lord is pleased every time we give him our best. Praise God. Amen. Your best shoe should be worn to the house of God. Amen. Your best hairstyle, your best wig should be used in church. Amen. People, when they have an occasion in town, and send, then they'll go shopping, they'll buy something. It's a one night event which you're going to go late for. <laughs> and the place is dark, nobody will even see you. <laughs> and they go and they buy this and invest and buy that, buy sh new shoe, new cloth, new this, new that. and. To people who can change your life. If you want to impress them. Or the king of glory. Who can change your life. You've never bought anything for. Him. You've never even bought for yourself to say, okay, I just want to look nice before him today. The best clothes should be worn to, be worn to church. The best shoes should be worn to church. Amen. Amen. Look your best when you are going to the house of God. You know you are leading worship or you are leading praise. Dress nice. Amen. 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 Dress nice. Clean up. Puff up if you must. Amen. Smell nice. Amen. There's nothing wrong with making up. Don't say it's Wednesday service or Friday service. Look your best. There's nothing wrong with. Who said? Did we burn heels on Wednesday? <laughs> the park is still there on Wednesday to take pictures. <laughs> this place is here too on Wednesday and on Friday. It's free. Serve God with your heart. You're going to a place at the beginning, you all of you pray, you pray, you know, let there be an encounter. Let there be change in my life. Let there be a word. You don't care, you just don't, you just. 
The word is coming now. <laughs> the word is coming now. But they tell you they talk of something now. Fresh as night, fresh as this. Name, any name. You know there will be an encounter. Just by how you dress, you know there will be an encounter. You bring out your phones. Hey, Instagram, we hear it. Snapchat. Show yourself. There's a lot of expectation. And you go back without anything. And the place where you are going with something, you trivialize or you are so familiar with. Did you know the Wednesday? Over familiarity. If you treat or think of yourself as local, you will remain local. Amen. Amen. If you think of yourself as global, you will always act and behave globally. C.S. Diamond, diligent in his dressing. Tap your neighbor, be diligent in your dressing. Be in your dressing. Amen. Say, be diligent in your hairstyle. There are some of you midweek, all you do is pack your hair, pack your hair. On Sunday, we'll just see a different thing. <laughs> you just pack it in, pack it in, pack it. Sunday, you are different. see, one of the things about the godly nature is he's consistent. God is consistent. He's the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same in the morning, afternoon, evening, and night. He's the same Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. He's the same. Tap your neighbor and say, are you of God? Are you of God? Or are you against God? Or are you different? Some of you, the people we know on Sunday and the people we know on Wednesday are not the same. They're not the same. 